16, I think it's 16, 16, 1692, excuse me, I was going to say 89, I was going to be three years early. Um, there was an outbreak of people being accused in Salem, Massachusetts of witchcraft. And there are some historians who believe that it may be tied to a virus or a mold that was in the rye that they were eating in their bread. Um, that caused the girls to have their fits and their spasms, that caused the whole thing to go on. Salem, Massachusetts was a relatively new English colony. The colony was mostly Puritan believers. Puritans had a strong faith in God and feared the devil. In Salem, often when something unusual happened, it was blamed on Satan. The Puritans settled in Massachusetts in 1628 so that they could worship as they chose. They believed, like most Christians, that Satan was an angel who rebelled against God. They believed that he spread evil on earth and that witches were Satan's servants. Puritan ministers said that women were especially likely to become witches because they were morally weak. In 1641, England passed a law making witchcraft illegal. Because Massachusetts was an English colony, this law directly applied to them. In 1692, Abigail Williams and her cousin Betty Paris fell ill to a mysterious sickness. The town doctor could not diagnose the illness, so he declared the girls were bewitched and looked as if they had been bitten and pinched by invisible agents. After the girls were diagnosed, they began accusing people in their town of being witches. Many more people began accusing others of witchcraft. It was mostly older, widowed women that were accused. Oh yes, uh, and this is true not only of Salem, but as I say, the larger witch hysteria that had been going on for a while. Inordinately, people accused of witchcraft, or uh, the legal term was malafikia, literally harmful magic. Um, almost always the people brought to book for witchcraft or malafikia were, were older women, uh, widow women, people who had uh, very little in the way of societal protections, uh, poor people. Uh, so if you were both an old woman, a widow woman, and a poor woman, uh, your chances were much better being accused of witchcraft than somebody Some of the people other accused included Samuel Paris' slave, Tichiba. Tichiba actually practiced some witchcraft, so she confessed right away. On February 29, 1692, Thomas Putman and several other people visited the local courthouse and formally accused Tichiba, Sarah Good, and Sarah Osborne. The accused women were then questioned. Sarah Good denied being a witch and harming the girls. She did accuse Sarah Osborne of being a witch. Tichiba admitted that the devil came to me and bid me to serve him. Tichiba's confession led the way to town-wide hysteria. Her confession began to spread around the town of Salem, and then people began to say that they had seen Osborne's goods and Tichiba's specters. More and more people were then accused. If someone was accused, they were thrown in jail. If the person did not confess to being a witch in prison, they would wait for their trials. In March of 1692, Dioda Lawson came to speak at Salem. He said that Salem was an evil, wicked town that was being punished for its wrongdoings. A few days after Lawson had spoken, Samuel Paris said that anybody could be the devil. What these two men said helped lead to even more widespread panic. In the next three months, more than 50 people were accused of witchcraft and thrown in jail. The first man accused during this time was John Proctor. The actual witch trials started on June 2, 1692. The first person to appear before the court was Bridget Bishop. She was found guilty and a week later she was hanged. By the end of June, five more people had been found guilty. One was a 71-year-old grandmother by the name of Rebecca Nurse. Although most of the witches were executed by hanging, one man, Giles Corey, was not. He was 80 years old and a longtime member of the church. He refused to enter a plea for witchcraft. As punishment, Salem officials placed a wooden board on his chest and put stones on it until the weight killed him. The two original girls, Abigail William and Betty Paris, were taken to other towns to perform witch tests. 
The girl said that by touching an accused witch, they could determine if he or she was actually a witch. The girls became famous. People all over Massachusetts wanted them to come and test accused witches. What do you think the accusers benefited from in accusing people of being witches? It's a speculative question. Uh, first of all, the children or young girls were caught doing things they weren't supposed to be doing with witchcraft and tituba. So I always think that part of the issue might have been it's easier to defend yourself for doing something you shouldn't have been doing by blaming it on someone or something else. Then secondly, I think the afflicted girls received a tremendous amount of attention and power from doing this. It might have even been a sort of exciting thing for them and that it would be hard for them to do anything but escalate. After about a year, the people in Salem began to realize that so many witches probably weren't in such a small town of Massachusetts. So on October 12, 1692, a law was passed that excused all of the accused witches still awaiting a trial. Even though the law released all of the people still waiting for a trial, it had a lasting effect. For example, many of the people tried got their lands confiscated. This left people without any money and without homes. This event has had a lasting effect in history. This occurrence led to the separation of church and state. Because so many people were convicted upon spectral evidence, new and better court rules were created. What are some lasting effects this has had on history? I think it's affected our court system here in the United States. I think it's set up due process. I think it's set up habeas corpus or produce the body. Um, I think it's set up all of those things because um, when people started creating our court system, they started talking about what do we really need to do, and those are some things that came up. Hey, we need to produce the evidence. We need to produce. You need to have due process. You need to be able to have a fair trial. Um, it also has helped us explain things like the McCarthy era, but the effect on history in terms of what more happened at the time, it was 1692. By 1700, people hardly even would call themselves Puritans anymore. The Puritan church was already declining in its control of society, which is part of why the hysteria happened. And so within a few years, once it stopped, the people who were part of making it happen fell into a shamed position. The people who knew it was wrong took control. The minister was driven out of town. Uh, the couple that is specially accused with their daughter accused other people were buried in unmarked graves. And really, Puritanism, even though it stayed part of the culture in many ways, was not a controlling force after this. <laughs>